Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station webinar. This is the Art of Trade Station, and the title of today's session is Understanding Intraday Volume Analysis. Before we jump into the topic of today's presentation, I want to welcome everyone. Thank you for taking time out of your schedules to learn a little bit about Trade Station. Before I start, here are some important disclosures. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of Trade Station. Um, also, that active trading is not suitable for everyone, and it should only be done with the risk capital. And past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. Uh, we all need to be aware of that. Uh, if you need a little bit more information about these disclosures, go to www.tradestation.com forward slash important dash information. Let's go ahead and switch over to TradeStation and talk about volume and how you can manage volume inside of the TradeStation platform. Some of the things that I'm going to talk about today may not be so obvious, so I want to make sure that everyone is aware that TradeStation supports certain technology, specifically in the area of um, volume. So let's go ahead and pull up a chart here on TradeStation. All right, this is the chart of Microsoft. Very quickly, I can go to studies, add studies. It gives me the list of studies and I'm gonna go here and, and load something that is built into the trade station uh, platform, which is volume average. So volume AVG and I'll click okay. There it is. As simple as that, I can get a histogram of volume right there at the bottom of, uh, of my chart. This is a chart of Microsoft uh, set to a five minute time frame. And the volume study that I used is called volume AVG. You can see that it's automatically color coded to show you when the price is going up or the price is going down. So whenever you see a volume histogram bar painted in red, you know that the price of the stock or the futures or any symbol you're looking at, the price dropped when compared to the previous bar, which is interesting. So uh, we label that as down volume. And whenever you see a volume histogram bar that is painted in blue, it's because the price of the candle is higher than the previous one. So we have an uptick on the price and we call that or label that uh, up volume. So you see that variation in color in that study at the bottom of the chart because it takes into, in, it takes into consideration what's happening to the volume. So consecutive red, Volume histogram just means that the price is dropping. Uh, so you can gauge whether volume is confirming, you know, that higher activity on the chart. This volume AVG study also has an orange line that goes through the histogram. That's volume average. Now, the average that this indicator plots and the one that it supports and you see there as an orange line is an average of a specific number of historical bars. The default right here is 50 bars. On a five minute chart, if you think about this, on a five minute chart, if you count 50 bars of those, how many hours of data does that give you? You know, if every bar is five minutes, that means that for every hour, you, yeah, Aaron says about six, yeah, for sure. In every hour you have 12. So um, if you, Divide 50 by 12, that gives you exactly how many hours that is for us exactly. So um, about four hours. Now, if you're looking at this indicator at the very beginning of the day, that is going to include volume activity from yesterday. If it's four hours in the day and you are looking at this indicator at, let's say, at 10 a.m. in the morning, there's only been 30 minutes of market activity for that day. So where does it get the rest of the data? From the prior day. So when you're looking at the average volume indicator here at the bottom, um, it's really tough to compare certain periods of the day with others. For example, at 10 a.m., if I'm looking at the average volume at 10 a.m., is that a graphical representation of volume of where volume should be at 10 a.m. in the morning every single day? No, it's not because it's a rolling moving average, it's, a move, it's called moving average for, for a reason. So it's gonna roll with the calculation and just give you an average of a certain historical period. I'm not saying that this indicator is not useful because it is. Um, it's very useful at identifying spikes in volume. But what happens is that 
volume usually has a very particular uh, pattern. It looks like a bowl, right? You have higher activity in the morning and you have higher activity towards the end of the day. And then at the bottom, it kind of uh, slows down a little bit. So it, it creates this shape of a bowl in volume. So it's very likely for the volume bars in the early hours of the day and towards the end of the day to pretty much spike up more activity. And uh, the signals that you get are probably because it's normal behavior of volume. So to tell you, to tell you exactly that a particular histogram bar exceeds the average by a certain percentage, it's very likely that that will happen at the beginning of the day and at the end of the day. I suppose that an indicator like this is very useful, uh, for example, in the middle of the day, because if you get a spike that is higher than the average in the middle of the day, that is more significant than, I would say, a spike that happens at the beginning of the day, because it's just is expected for you know, the volume activity to spike over the average. And you can see that very clearly. Every time you have a session break, like uh, those um, vertical dotted lines that you see here in my chart, those are my session breaks. And you see how they align with this spike of volume every single time there's a session break. So it's expected for the volume bars to exceed average. If I put this indicator into radar screen, let me show you something really interesting. I'm gonna open up a radar screen here for a moment. And I'm gonna add the NASDAQ 100. This is 100 symbols that make up the NASDAQ index. All right, I'm gonna remove bid, ask, high and low. And I'm going to add volume average right here on radar screen. If you guys haven't used radar screen, it's one of the most powerful tools that TradeStation has. I recommend you guys use it. And not only to have a list of symbols like I have here, but to add indicators like volume average. This volume average indicator that I'm clicking on, this is the same volume average study that I used in charting, but you're able to put it right here in radar screen. So by me adding this indicator over here, I'll put it here at the very end and clicking OK. By keeping this indicator on the, on the right, I've technically added that indicator to 100 individual chart analysis windows. Very powerful. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes if you have radar screen, you can apply these technical studies on a list of symbols. And this is just 100. You can have up to 1,000 symbols and use technical ideas like this. Now, there are certain columns here that I don't want. I'm going to right click here on zero line, go to studies, show hide plots, and uncheck that. I'm only interested in the first two. And for every study in TradeStation, you have this ability of right clicking it and, and modifying it. Um, I, I think one of the greatest things about TradeStation is that you can make it look and you can make it do whatever you want. With the help of Easy Language, which we're going to get to in a little moment, you're going to see the potential of TradeStation as a platform that you can customize. Okay, so here we have, and I left, you know, the volume today study uh, in purpose so that you can compare volume today with volume average. You can see how the volume average numbers are nowhere near what the volume today values are. The reason is because this column that I just added, the volume average study, is based on a historical time frame. Just like you saw in the five minute chart that we were looking at for Microsoft, um, you saw volume per bar. This is exactly what's happening here. The volume numbers are for the most recent bar at what time frame? Right here. This is the interval at five minutes. So when I look at the volume right here that says 80s, let me remove this symbol. This is the NASDAQ symbol. Okay, so Apple is at the very top of my list. You can see the volume is 171,000 based on my volume average indicator, but it is 81 million for today. This is cumulative for today. This 192 is for the most recent five minute bar. Big difference. Uh, if you look at the volume average, 980,000, that is the average five minute volume for the past 50 bars. So you could say, oh, Apple trades about 980,000 shares every five minutes, because that's an average for the past 50 five minute bars. Technically, I could turn on an alert here and know which stocks 
are trading at a certain percentage higher than the average, which I think it's great information to have. Let me show you how to turn that on. I know this is not a radar screen indicator, but I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that you can turn on these alerts and uh, know when something is happening that is out of the ordinary, is not usual, especially, you know, at this time of the day, it is 2 p.m. Eastern time. The markets are kind of slow. Where is the activity happening? This is a good way to find out. I'm going to go to studies, edit the volume average for all symbols, enable the alert. I'm going to disable the messaging. I don't want any sirens going off or any pop-up messages. I want to double check the inputs because that tells me what percentage this is looking for. And you can see that the alert percentage is 50. What does that mean? That this indicator is looking for stocks that exceed the average by 50%. So an example, if you have an average of 1,000 shares traded, if today the trade is 1,500, it reaches that alert because 50% of 1,000 is 500. And then it adds that on top of the average. It has to exceed the average by that percentage. Now, I can be a little bit more aggressive and I can say, well, give me 100. So if you put in a 100 in there, you're looking for volume that doubles the average. So this is really extreme volume based on the five-minute average. I'm going to click OK. And this turns the alert on for all these symbols. And I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go here and use the filter bar and say, I want to only see my volume average that are triggering a true alert. And take a look at the symbol that shows up. This is Vertex. Vertex what? Pharmacy? Pharmaceuticals, VRTX. Uh, we see that the volume on this last five minute bar is 37,000 shares. What is the average? Only 5,000. You see the extreme? We see another one, Siri. An average that trades 160,000, 116,000 every five minutes. It's at 261,000 right now. Now, as we approach the end of this five-minute bar, we get more symbols, and they'll reset once the five-minute bar is over, which is going to happen in about five seconds. So you're going to see that in five seconds, these three symbols will disappear because volume is reset. You see? Now we see 100 and 200, and now they go away. So let me uncheck that filter, and you can see how low all the volume numbers are because again this is all based on a five minute time frame and every five minutes it resets everything and starts counting again so it's really tough from so it's going to be difficult to find a bar that just opened to have you know double the amount of shares than the average it usually happens you know towards the end of the bar but this is a this is a clear way for you to get alerted if you find um, activity that is out of the ordinary. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some other ways of looking at volume. This will be posted, yes, I, by the way, Manolo. Manolo works, is a colleague of mine and he's here in the room with me. So whenever you see any um, posts from Manolo, uh, he's trade station. So he's gonna tell you where to find the archives, um, different links that I'm going to be referencing. So he's gonna be helping me out here. So whatever Manolo says, is, is good, okay? Uh, let's go and take a look at um, other things. Um, right here, I have my volume indicator. Uh, there's two ways that you can look at volume as well. You can take a look at volume based on number of shares, which is usually what people look at, you know? If you look at, for example, Microsoft on this chart, you can see my volume number up here. Uh, so far, Microsoft has traded 14.7 million shares based on the volume quote up here. I see it broken down into five minute segments down here, which is, is, is fine. But what you see here on the far right, let me open up my chart a little bit more so you can see a little bit more detail. Uh, over here on the far right, I see the current values for the current five minute bar. The average is 161,000. Right now, the five-minute bar has traded about 76,000 shares. I can change how that volume is read by going into the settings of the symbol because I started saying something 
moment ago that volume can be expressed in two different ways. You can look at volume in terms of how many shares have been traded, but you can also look at how many trades have occurred, how many transactions, you know, because it's two different things. You can have one trader submit one order to trade 1,000 shares. That's one person trading 1,000 shares. Or you can have 100 traders trading 10 shares at a time. Gives you the exact same volume of 1,000. But which one would you think has the most activity? The one trader with 1,000 shares or the 100 traders with 10 shares, you know, that's, that's a big difference. So the more activity tends to be where you have more people, more traders interested in trading the actual symbol. So not to discredit, you know, a number of shares, because it's also very important to keep track of shares, but sometimes you want to know how many transactions are happening. What does that translate into? How many people are actually coming in and trading for for this particular symbol. So what we do is we double click on the candle. In fact, I double click on the candle because it's a, it's a shortcut that I prefer. So double click on any candle you see, just double click on it. And right here at the top, you can see, well, you see the interval and there's a section here that says for volume use. By the way, this is only available on intraday charts. That's why the title of the presentation is called intraday volume analysis. Um, not available. If I switch to daily, notice that there's no settings available. So I'm going to stay on minute. Five minutes is okay. But instead of using trade volume, I'm going to set this to tick count. So tick count is the other type of volume that I was talking to you about. I'm going to click OK. And here we go. Take a look at the numbers here on the far right. Now, I'm not talking about 161,000 shares traded. Now I see 888. What is that? Well, 888 trades, transactions. It could be, you know, 888 people, but if you have, you know, a trader submitting multiple trades within the five minutes, it could be the same person over and over again. But you can see that the average is represented differently. Now you're getting to know how many transactions are happening every five minutes. Well, close to 1,000 transactions every five minutes. And right here at the bottom, you can see the cumulative number of trades that are going to happen on the current five-minute bar. Again, can you use this as a way of looking for spikes in the market? Of course you can. Uh, very, very, very easy to do. This is a volume indicator, as I said before, that is counting number of trades. Um, and we can see that the average is the 865. If I come here to the symbol, and let me do something, double click on the candle. Sometimes it doesn't take it. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna go here to, instead of using a minute bar, I'm gonna use a tick chart because I wanna, I wanna show you something really cool. On a tick chart, I'm gonna set my tick interval to 800 ticks. Um, I'm using 800 because on a five minute time frame, that's how many trades happen on a five minute. So if I want to create an equivalent on a, of a five minute bar, this is a great way to do it. I set my volume to keep track of ticks. I see the average for the last 50 bars. And then I take that number and I kind of create the same amount of tick chart. If I do an 800 tick chart, I'm going to click OK. This is going to go and load tick data. Somebody asked about how much tick data we have. We have uh, six months of tick data, which is a ton of information, but it goes back six months. Now take a look at what's happening here on this chart. This is my five minute chart. I'm not a five minute, this is an 800 tick chart of Microsoft. Take a look what happened to volume. Why is my volume indicator looking like that? Because they're both counting the same thing. My chart, the candlesticks are being built based on activity. So for every candlestick, I have 800 trades. Well, volume, what is volume counting? It's counting the number of trades too. So it looks like a flat line because every time you reach 800, it goes on to the next bar. 
They're both counting the same thing. It looks like a flat line. But now I can go in here into the symbol settings. And then for volume use, I can say, show me shares at the bottom. So now I have a combination of two things. I have the chart that's being built on trading activity, not based on time. And I also have my volume indicator that's giving me how many shares does every grouping of 800 trades represent. We already said that every candlestick is the accumulation of 800 trades. In average, that represents about 148,000 shares based on this average. Pretty cool, huh? So you can make all sorts of combination here to analyze volume. And we all know, and you should know this if you're a, a trader, is that when you build charts that are based on activity, they become more sensitive when the market's really active. You know, if I have this chart open here and I say, this is an 800 tick chart, it's gonna load more candlesticks at the very beginning of the day because markets are more active at the beginning of the day. Does that make sense? Now, I, wanna, I want you to see something here and I'll prove it to you. Uh, this is where the day started this morning, right here. We see that vertical dotted line right here on the chart, right? In TradeStation, every bar has, a, has an end time. So let's go ahead and take a look. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna click on the background and hold. This will give me access to this little box called the data tips window. I'm gonna put it right here on top of the very first bar of the day. And I want everybody to see the time that shows on the top left corner of this data tips window, 9.31.17. Does everybody see that? So the first candlestick closed one minute and 17 seconds after it opened. That's why the closing time is 9.31.17. Tells you the time that it closed. So it only took one minute and 17 seconds to accumulate 800 ticks, which is our bar interval. Hopefully that makes sense. Now I want you to take a look at, uh, maybe let's go to, let's take a look at uh, something here closer, closer to today's trading activity. Uh, let's take, I don't know, any, any bar. I'm gonna take this green candle right here. I want you guys to see the time is 1338.05. And the next is, 1345. So take a look at the difference between the two times. I'm taking a look at the two um, bars that are together. 1338, 1345. That's at least seven minutes for it to go from one candle to the other. And you can see a big difference between the beginning of the day and during the day because when the chart has more trading activity, you see the chart building more candlesticks. And as I said at the beginning, it's a more sensitive way of looking at volume, not to discredit the time-based charting, because I know that those are very popular, but do not you know, overlook the fact that you can build these very interesting volume charts that you can you know, gather some additional analysis from. All right, uh, let's take a look at uh, some indicators, okay. Um, Manolo is going to be kind enough to share with you a zip folder. The zip folder is going to contain some custom indicators that I want everybody to save to your computers because these are indicators that work on TradeStation. So uh, Manolo, whenever you can, if you can share that link with the class right here, we'll make it happen. So I'm going to turn this into a five-minute chart while that happens, all right? There we go. Uh, thank you, Manolo. So if everybody clicks on that link, that's going to give you a download. It should give you the download automatically. The, the link is designed to, to work that way, just to download something automatically. If you don't see anything happening when you click on the, on the link, check your downloads folder to see if you find that zip folder. Let me open it up here on my side so you know exactly what it looks like. So make sure you save that to your computer. And uh, if I double click on that file, I'm going to find, I'm gonna find this. I have a details list, but let me go ahead and enlarge icons. The icon will look like this. EL stands for easy language. This is called the at MC. And it's at MC because MC stands for masterclass. This is the type of content that we do in the masterclass. 
Uh, it has an at symbol because those are sorted towards the top and it's just convenient, but it's called intraday volume average. Uh, if you double click on that file that I just shared with everyone here, then it opens up the import wizard. Just make sure that you double click on the file with TradeStation open and it'll go into the wizard automatically. I'm just gonna click next. Uh, it has three different indicators and it has a function. We're gonna take a look at the three indicators that are part of this package because it gives you a volume analysis with a different spin. So I'm gonna click on finish and I'm getting a confirmation here that where it's a message that says they already exist. You shouldn't get this message because if you haven't installed them, it should be a, fr a fresh installation. If you have them, just click on yes to all and it'll overwrite what you had in there. There we go, and we're done. So the first indicator that I wanna show you is, um, is this. This is my five minute chart of Microsoft. I'm gonna set something up here so you can understand why we created this indicator. I'm going to go to studies, add studies. Let me do a volume average. Okay, that's, uh, that's the one we looked at earlier. Um, I'm gonna add another symbol. So data, add symbol. I'm gonna do Microsoft one more time. So just take a look at what I'm doing here. I added Microsoft as a second symbol at the bottom of the screen because I wanna include or add volume again. So I'm gonna go to add study, volume average. Where's my volume average? Here it is. I went blind for a moment, volume average. And um, I'm going to prompt for editing because I wanna change uh, which symbol to use. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna to go to the general tab and I'm gonna set it to symbol number two. Why am I doing that? Because I wanted to show you something. I want to double click on this second Microsoft that I added. I'm just gonna double click on one of the candlesticks and I'm gonna set this one to tick count and then click okay. So notice what happens. I have two symbols that are the same, exactly the same. This is Microsoft on a five minute time frame, but my volume indicator, one is set to shares and the other one is set to uh, ticks. Now let me hide this middle symbol because I don't need it. I'm not gonna delete it. I'm just gonna go to the scaling and I'm going to say hide it so that I only see the two indicators. They're both based on Microsoft, but one is counting the number of shares and one is counting the number of ticks. What type of information can I gather from here? Well, I can see what is the average trade size. If I take, and I'm gonna use my calculator here, let's pull it up. Oh, that's a big calculator. Let me reduce it in size, it's way too big. Okay, there we go. Everybody sees my calculator. I'm gonna take this number approximately, 155,000. And I'm gonna divide it by this number, which is the average tick size, 840. So if we have the total number of shares divided by the total number of trades, we get this number, 184. What does that mean? What is that 184? That in average, Microsoft, every single trade has a size of 184 shares. That's, I, I think that's interesting because now you can say, okay, if the average trade size is so-and-so, maybe I can create an indicator that instead of giving me number of shares or number of ticks, give me an indicator that gives me the trade size, average trade size. Because if the trade size or the average trade size starts increasing, it may be an indication that large traders, institutional uh, traders, uh, fund, uh, mutual fund managers, um, hedge funds, these uh, big guys, professional guys are entering the market and increasing their trade size. Let's go ahead and take a look. So one of the indicators that I shared with everyone here requires two symbols. So let me go ahead and set my chart again so that you know exactly what you need to do. Uh, you start off with one symbol. Let me go ahead and remove this. This is a simple five minute chart, simple five minute chart of Microsoft. Before you use this indicator, you need the indicator there twice. I'm gonna come over here to, to data, add symbol, 
Microsoft. Now I have it twice. It's exactly the same symbol. You can see Microsoft five minutes, Microsoft five minutes. Make sure that you do this before inserting the indicator. Otherwise, you're going to get an error. I'm going to go to studies, add studies, and the indicator, as I said at the, uh, a moment ago, starts with an at sign and then MC. And the indicator is called average trade size. Everybody sees that? At MC, average trade size. I'm going to click OK. And before I click on OK here, on the inputs tab, it gives you an average length of 30. I'm going to leave it as a default, but you can come here and change how, how much history you want on that indicator. And here it is. Now, it looks like this because I need to do something additional. I need to check the two symbols and see uh, if they're using the right volume. I'm going to double click on the top one, go to settings. This is using trade volume, number of shares. The second symbol is the one that we want to set to tick count so that we do the math that we did on the calculator. So it takes the number of shares and divides them by the number of trades. So we have to double click on the second symbol and make sure that this is one or this one is set to tick count. Once you make that change and you click OK, the indicator comes to live. A different way, a different view of, of volume. Now, if you look at this indicator at the bottom, we kind of move away from that usual bowl pattern that we see in volume, where we see spikes at the beginning of the trading session and then spikes at the end of the session. Here is more consistent in the way that it reads the volume because it's creating you or giving you average trade size rather than number of shares or number of trades is giving you the mathematical formula between the two. So what is this telling us exactly? Let me open this up a little bit and let me make this a little bit thicker. So the trade size, I'm just going to make it thicker. Okay. Let me make that the default. All right. So that way it looks better on the screen. Uh, you can tell over here on the right-hand side that the current bar is very close to where the average is. But if I want to know what the average is, I can always look right here on the very top. This cyan number tells me that in average, Microsoft trades 186. This is 186 shares per trade. Remember, this is average trade size. The current bar is 179. But I can tell, you know, whenever there is a spike in the trade size. This is uh, maybe this fell right here at the beginning of the, of the chart, which is OK, you know. But um, we don't see that behavior here on the prior day. But on this current bar, where the trade size is 448, you can see the magnitude of the size that these traders were putting into the market. Almost 500 shares was the average trade size on this bar. How, how much does it cost to trade 500 shares of Microsoft? Well, that's easy to find out. I can pull up the calculator. Where's my calculator? Not there, right? So on my calculator, let me pull up my trade station now. So 500 times the price of Microsoft is 235. So you, you, you can tell that a trade of 500 shares is $117,000. You know, not, not everyone has this kind of capital in an account to be able to trade Microsoft with a 500 share size. But this one, this little bar right here, the average trade size was 500 shares. So it is significant. What was happening there? Did, um, did you know, big players come into the market? Does that correlate with something that's happening in the market. And I want everybody to see what just happened here right after we saw that big spike in the trade size. There was a sell-off on Microsoft. It dropped from you know, almost $240 down to $235, a $5 drop. I'm not saying that every time you see this spike in volume that happens because that's not what I'm implying, but it's just interesting that it happened, right? And a lot of times you're going to find, you know, 
areas where you find these spikes that correlate with significant uh, price movements, all right? Let's go ahead and take a look at another indicator. I wanted to show you this because this is not part of the trade station platform. And sometimes it is interesting for you to see what the trade size is, okay? Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at another indicator. Um, I'm gonna leave this here because I'm, I'm gonna come back to my radar screen, but I'm gonna open up another workspace and open up a new chart. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at, this is the five minute chart of Microsoft again. The other indicator that I shared with you in that zip folder is called at MC intraday average, I think it's called. At MC, let's see, here it is, intraday vol AVG CH. CH is just a short for charting, is an indicator that works for charting, but this is the one that tracks intraday volume average. And you're able to compare what the average was at 10 a.m. this morning compared to the average 10 a.m. yesterday. Let's take a look at what the indicator tells us. I'm just gonna put it right here on the chart. The very first time that you put it on the chart, it's gonna be a little bit confusing because as you can see, there's nothing on my chart. And the reason for that is because I don't have enough historical data. The indicator is designed to create an average of 10 days of historical data. And if you don't supply the data to the indicator, it's not gonna give you the calculation. How many days of data do we have here? One, two, three, four, five days of historical data. All I need to do, is request more. I'm gonna load 30 days. And I'm gonna do that using the command line. I like to use the command line, it's a very nice shortcut. And I'm just gonna type in 30 days. When I type in 30 days, the indicator just lights up and it's right there at the bottom. It's a very cool histogram. And it looks like waves that are running or crashing against the right side of the chart, pretty cool. Let me go ahead and explain all the different components of this particular indicator. Let me open this up a little bit because they're different colors that we need to understand and we need to know what each one of the plots are, okay? Um, let's, talk, let's talk about the histogram first. Not, I mean, independent from color, we can see that the histogram starts at the very beginning of the session and it ends at the very end of the session and it increases gradually. So what the, what the indicators doing is accumulating volume, you know, bar per bar. And that's why it just goes and increases, but it's accumulating volume in a very particular way because it's keeping track of historical volume as well. So this is an indicator that's creating like little buckets where it's putting data. So on today's session, the very first bucket on a five minute time frame is the bucket that closes at 935. If you're looking at a five minute chart, that's the very first time bucket. So it's gonna put whatever volume it traded inside that 935 bucket. But then it's gonna take a look at the bucket from the session before the same time, 935, and then add that volume into that same bucket. So all the buckets that are labeled 935 in the morning, we're gonna include all the volume from that specific bar. And that is going to be averaged by the number of days that you're looking back. And it's gonna provide you an average for that bucket. Pretty cool, huh? So the value that I see here, let me, I'm gonna close, I'm clicking on the background and I'm putting my vertical axis right here on the very beginning of the session, the very first bar. And I'm just reading, the information that's here, but um, let's see. I want to look at the number in magenta, the second number in magenta that says average bar volume is 892,000. That's the average for that first five minute bar. And today's volume is the one that shows up in red, the 617,334. So you can compare what the volume today, which is the red number, is compared to the average on that 9.35 a.m. bucket. Pretty cool, huh? So yes, just to clarify, 
the histogram that you see that looks like a wave, it's the average volume per bar. And the little stars that you see that go with it, you know, sometimes on this day, yesterday's day, they're easier to see because they are above the wave. The stars are what the volume is today or on that session. So you can see that on today's session, today's volume is a little bit lower than what the average volume was for the past 10 days. Does that make sense? Hmm. Really, really interesting indicator. Now, let's talk about colors here a little bit. Whenever you see the histogram in magenta, like in today's trading session, that just means that today's volume is below the average. That's why it's magenta. And whenever you see those bars in cyan, in cyan, it just means that today's volume is higher than the average. And you can clearly see that because the stars are above the histogram. That's what controls the cyan and the magenta. The yellow are just highlights. Whenever you see the yellow, it just means that there's a big difference between today's volume and what the average was. And of course, you can edit that. I believe right now is looking at a, uh, um, a 25, or is it 125%. So it has to be 100, it doesn't have to be 125%, it has, it has to be 25% higher than the average. Whenever you get that criteria met, whenever today's volume is higher than the average by 25%, that's when it color codes the histogram in yellow. So we already understand magenta, cyan, and yellow. So let's talk about the color here in the little stars. The little stars will give you the difference in the acceleration, which is another interesting concept. Whenever you see the stars in green, it just means that today's volume is accelerating at a higher speed than what the average is. And whenever you see the stars in red, it's because the acceleration is not as intensive as the average is. So it's not, it doesn't have the same strength. It doesn't have the same steam. Uh, so there's a lot of things going on here in this indicator, but it's a great way for you to compare today's volume with what the average is, not like we saw it in the first indicator, but what the average is at that exact same point in time in history. You know, if I double click on this indicator and I go to inputs, it does, it's not really complex. There's only three inputs. The very first one, you can tell it how many days back to look at. The default is 10. I know that a lot of people want to see more of an average. You can include, you know, put 30, 50, whatever you want. Just be, just be aware that whatever number you put in there, you have to support that with historical data on the chart. You know, the chart sometimes will give you a default um, amount of historical data. And if the indicator doesn't have that historical data to calculate, you won't see anything. Just keep that in the back of your mind so that if you use this indicator next time and you don't see anything, oh, I remember, I need to load more history for the indicator to run the calculations. The second input is alert percent. So you decide, okay, when do you want the yellow to show up? Whenever the today's volume is 25% higher, double the amount, whatever it is, the average, you just put it in there. Um, so if I want it to be... Any other number, I just have to edit it. And then background color, black. Hmm. This changes the color of the indicator. I think that if I, if I use a white background, I can just type in white, and then it changes the color profile of the study. So it's just a, a preference, you know? I know that a lot of uh, trade station users would rather use a white background than black, and this just gives you an input to tell the indicator what color background you have. Mine is black, so I want those colors to be more intensive and that's what it's doing, okay? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at this indicator, but on radar screen, which gives you additional information, not only on one symbol, but on a list of symbols. Let me go over here to, um, I think I already had a radar screen open. So let me go here to the one that I had opened with this volume average. I'm going to click on the plus, 
And uh, then again, look for at MC. And uh, it's right here, intraday vol average RS. RS is just a short for radar screen, specifically designed for radar screen. I'm gonna click okay. And this is what it looks like. Okay, let's take a look at all the different columns that are populated here. This is the exact same indicator that we see in the chart. This just has, you know, a uh, spreadsheet format because it's calculated on 100 charts. So look at this. Um, we're going to modify it a little bit. For example, alert percent and base to average is good to see. But if it's something that I use, you know, the same number all the time, I may not need that column on the right hand side. You know, if I always use 10 for the historical uh, calculation and I always use the alert percent of 125, what's the point of keeping a whole column in here showing me those numbers? I can right click, go to studies, show hide plots, and then uncheck studies, show hide plots. I'm going to uncheck alert percent. Uh, do I need to see today's volume? Maybe. Do I need to see the average? Maybe, so I can make some sense out of these alerts. So the color coding that you see here in this radar screen indicator is the same that you see in charting. This column that shows in red and green is just showing you the acceleration. That's the color of the little stars that we were seeing here, uh, let's see, on this indicator. So whenever this, uh, these starts turn red or green, that's being represented here by this column. You can make that very narrow if you want, if you don't want those colors to really you know, scream at you. Uh, here, I see uh, the volume percent and I see an alert. Now, this is where the, it gets really interesting because the volume percent is just showing you or comparing these two values, what the average is and what today's volume is. So if you look at the very top, this is Apple right here. In average, at this time of the day, which is 2, you know, 51, Apple should have traded about 55 million shares. How much has it traded today? 61. So we are a little bit ahead of the average by maybe 6 million shares. What's the percentage? 1.11. To be more exact, it's 111%. Not 111%, this is 11% higher. I'm not sure why it expresses the percentage this way, but think of it as, you know, um, this is just 11% uh, higher than the average or 111% uh, of the average. Uh, let's take a look at another one, one that is generating an alert. For example, ADP. This is um, ADP, automatic data processing. The average on any, at this time of the day, is about 406,000. The volume today is 660,000. So that's 162% over the average. And that's why it's generating an alert. The alert, of course, is customizable. We already said that if you go to the inputs of this indicator, you can set the alert percentage. This is 125. So any symbol that goes beyond the average by 125%, then you generate the alert. How many symbols are generating the alert? I can double click on alert and group them all together. This is the NASDAQ 100. So out of the 100 symbols, we see 18 are trading at higher volume than average. Interesting, interesting comparison. Uh, does it work with futures? Yes, it does. It's very flexible. So over here, I have Microsoft. But if I change this to ESZ22, which is the December contract, there you go. That's my volume average. Now, if I want to remove the overnight, I just have to go to ESZ22.D. And then I see the same indicator, but applied to futures. And that's it. I don't want to run over, so I'm going to leave my presentation right here. But um, I want to say that it was a great pleasure, you know, presenting these indicators to everyone here. Please experiment with volume. Um, make sure that you are aware of the different settings that are available 
uh, to format the symbol and show volume that you're interested in, use these indicators, the one for charting and radar screen, and see if it helps you in your, in your trading. The, the whole idea of visualizing volume in a different way is, is to do that exactly, to see if it's beneficial for you. So thank you guys for joining me today. Thank you for always being supportive of Trade Station webinars. And I hope that everyone has a pleasant and wonderful evening. And I hope to see you in our next session. All right. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye, everyone.